Hi, my name is Mr. Stavenja, and I'm going to be taking you through some lessons in how to use Rhino. Rhino is absolutely the coolest program ever, in my opinion, and I think you're going to learn to really like it, too. Um, so bear with me here as I kind of go through some things with you. In order to make this easy for you to see on your screen, I've reduced the resolution of my computer down to like 600 or 800 by 600 or something, which means that some of these toolbars that you're seeing right here run off the edge of the screen on mine. When you open Rhino, you'll be able to see the whole thing, I promise. So let me talk to you um, a little bit about what you're seeing here in front of you. What I need you to do is go to your uh, desktop and go ahead and find the Rhino symbol and double click it to open up Rhino. I've already done that. Um, you're always going to want to do that first. Many of you are in the habit when you've already been working on a file, say a Word document, instead of going and opening Word first and then clicking on the file, you probably just go find the file and click on it and Word opens automatically. Uh, Rhino doesn't like that very much and there's a couple reasons why. First of all, if you're um, we're using a file that's located someplace on your school server and um, that's where you're saving it to, you'll end up working actually remotely to that file located off someplace else. For all we know, it could be at the school district's office down downtown or out on Lancaster. Who knows? So anyway, if you open Rhino first and then you go File, Open, and go find the file that you need to open, um, you'll be a lot better off. Um, another thing that happens sometimes when you just click a file and open directly is when it opens up the toolbars, which you just simply have to have to do the work, will be gone. If the toolbars aren't here, you've got to go back and get them again, and um, I'll try to remember and show you later how to do that. But right now, what I want to do is talk to you about um, a couple things. First of all, uh, who am I? I'm the drafting teacher at McNary High School as I um, give you these lessons and I've been doing this for a long time. I think I started teaching drafting in the school district in 1982. So um, at that time it was all done with paper and pencil on top of tables. So with, things have changed quite a bit. Most of the time I've been using AutoCAD in my classroom and there's nothing wrong with AutoCAD. It's a great program. Um, unfortunately right now it's gotten really expensive. A Rhino is very much like AutoCAD. It actually does some 3D modeling much better than AutoCAD. Um, there's a few things that I still like better than AutoCAD in AutoCAD better than I do here in Rhino, but really um, I think when you learn Rhino you're going to be really happy with it. So I want you to um, take a look at your screen here. You've opened Rhino. You've got four viewports that open up. Now each of these is like a window into space. Um, one labeled top, one labeled front, one labeled right, and then maybe my favorite is one labeled perspective. To begin with, on these first couple assignments or so, we're just going to work in the top viewport. Sometimes we call that the plan view. It's looking straight down on top of um, our plane. And so if I double click on top, I zoom in and I have just the top viewport. If I want to switch back again, I double click it again and it goes back to the four viewports. Now, um, let me talk about um, some toolbars here and I'm going to look at my notes. Um, first of all, across the top up here in these words, this is called the menu bar and I'll probably never remember to call it that again, but this is the menu bar and this is kind of left over from the old DOS days of doing programs where things were done with words instead of icons. And I'll be honest because that's when I learned to do uh, computer drafting, that's what I'm most comfortable with. So what they call curves here in Rhino are actually any 2D um, object. It could be a line, it could be an arc, it could be a circle, um, and a whole number, rectangle, a whole bunch of different things. So you'll find those under curve. So I click on curve, there's all of those different choices, and, and then there's more arrows. Under line I've got what, one, two, I don't know, about ten or twelve different choices along here of way to draw lines. Polyline, you know, a few there, uh, four different ways to draw a rectangle, uh, five different ways to draw a circle and so forth. So that's all underneath what's called the, let me get it right, menu bar. Directly beneath it, at least on my screen, and should be right on yours, directly beneath it going across here is what's called the uh, standard toolbar. And it's got things like your, your file, you know, new file, um, open a file, save a file, um, here's a really great um, button, undo. If you do something you don't like, you can always undo it. Um, then if you change your mind, you can right click. See how you get the two, let me go back on it here. See how you get the two little symbols? If I left click it, that's this finger, I get the undo button. And if I right click it, that's this finger, 
right here I get the redo button. Now, uh, why did I try to skip using this finger right here? Well, you know, you can think of a lot of reasons why we wouldn't use it. The real reason is what I'm, I'm really hoping that in your lab you have a three button mouse and in the center of it is a scroll key and when you scroll that in and out, let me go back to my top view here, you can see by the grid that I get closer or further away as I roll it. So you've really got to learn to use this finger well if you're going to be successful in drafting. You've got to keep it on that scroll key. If you roll it, you move in and out. If you hold down on it, you get a pop-up menu with some quick buttons um, of things that you use all the time. So it's a great little um, finger to have available to you. Okay, I'm kind of teasing you here a little bit. If you were in my class, I'd probably make everybody wave that finger around. Um, it drives me crazy when I walk up to somebody and they're still using a mouse with just these two fingers um, on the two buttons and ignoring that third one because it, that's a really powerful button um, here in the drafting programs. Okay, now we're going to continue on here. The next toolbar that's floating across here is called the command history window and it has a blank line where a command will go. I can type in a command like line or circle or whatever as well as click on it. Um, and then up above it I've, I've got it so it's displaying two lines so you'll be able to see what you just did displayed across. It kind of scrolls up as you go along and you'll see that as we start using it. Sometimes um, we'll take that one and position it across the bottom of the screen. Let me see if I can get it to park down there like that. Um, in AutoCAD, the command toolbar has traditionally always been at the bottom, and so that's where some of teachers will place it, including me in my classroom. But the truth is, it's probably better up here at the top because a lot of times the program will be giving you prompts, things you need to see, and um, if it's at the bottom, you maybe don't notice them. Okay, then down the left here, I've got two toolbars, and again, because of the low resolution, they're kind of going off the screen at the bottom. And these are called the um, main toolbar one and main toolbar two. And then there's another one open, or should be, I don't see it, um, called the standard toolbar that should be across the bottom here. For toolbars, if you go to tools, toolbar layout, and you pick on the default, then you've got all these different toolbars you can turn on. What you don't want to do is turn them all on. You won't be able to work. So main one and main two are these two right here. Notice if I turn one off, it disappears over there. Turn it back on. There it is. And then the other one that you want is the standard. There it is, right there. Okay, we need the standard. Oh, that's this one across the top. Okay. Um, I think there's one more that I might want um, for my object snaps and I'll have to look for that later I guess when we're ready to use it. There's too many words in that list for my eye to see real quickly. Okay, so here we are um, ready to draw something and on my screen I've made it kind of a pale blue just because I think that's prettier than the default gray and I've made my um, X coordinate red and my Y coordinate yellow. Yours by default are not that, that color. But I just thought this was a little bit nicer for illustration purposes. So if you've ever used Cartesian coordinate system, some of you in math know that X always goes horizontally to the right and Y goes vertically. And we're going to do a little um, uh, battleship game to get you familiar with that here probably in the next assignment. But right now um, I'm just trying to get you comfortable with what you have to look at here. So how would we draw something on here? I would go up either to curve, line, and pick a line segment. Start a line. Um, the, z the very center of my screen right now is at zero, zero. And down here um, there's an X and Y and a Z number being called out so you can kind of see where you are. But if I just typed in zero and hit enter, that lo locates me right in the center. If ortho button is on, it'll probably drive you crazy because this but the lines will only go vertically or horizontally. Um, that's for orthographic projection drawing. If I turn that off by clicking on it, then it'll let me take the line anywhere I want. If I put snap on, it connects me to the grid and it only bounces around. Right now snap is set at 0.25 or one fourth of an inch, so it's snapping every quarter of an inch as I move it around. Okay? So sometimes that's helpful and sometimes you don't even want that. Okay, um, so I would just go where I wanted, click
click wherever I wanted, click wherever I wanted. Notice up here on my command line, it tells what I'm doing. End of line, press enter when done. One of the things I've got here are two buttons, close and undo. Let me show you what you have to do here to make use of those. If I want an undo, I simply type the letter that's underlined. So the U is all I need. So if I didn't like where this last line went, I would just type U and hit enter, and it would back up. I could type U again and it would back up. So that's an undo. Remember up here we had the right button which was redo. Um, because I hadn't used that command it didn't work. Let me start over again. So I'm going to do a line segment. This time notice I started there. Zero, enter. I'm going to go up. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go down. And now I'm going to type C for close. And it takes me back to where I started there at the beginning. Now if I didn't like that rectangle and I clicked the undo button, it would go away. If I right clicked over the undo button, it would come back. It would redo or recreate that rectangle. Okay, um, many of you will learn to use all of these icons, whereas I tend to use the uh, words with the pull downs or underneath the words. See that? Um, just because that's the way I'm used to. But if you take the time which I haven't, to really learn what's inside of these toolbars. Um, that's probably just as fast or faster. Also, you know, if you look closely, and I don't know if you can see it on my screen, but you will on yours, many of these icons have like a little triangle in the corner. So like if I, this says when I hover over it, um, left click is polyline, right click is a line segment. If I hold down on it, I get a whole, I get the whole lines toolbar with all of the buttons that represent the same things that if I came over to curve line and looked at here, all of these choices are underneath one of these icons. Uh, or each one is under an icon. So if I hover over them, it'll tell me what they are. Um, you know what? And I'll be honest with you, some of them, I don't even know what they do. I've never taken the, the time or trouble to figure it out. So some of you will uh, play with all of these and figure them out, and you'll be probably a better Rhino user than I am. And that's okay with me. When I'm done looking at that toolbar, I can just close it again. Okay, I think that's all I want to do right now on this first lesson. I just kind of brought you in. Uh, what I would encourage you to do, I'm going to um, delete that off. What I would encourage you to do is play around a little bit um, with some of these different buttons. Here's down here a T for text. Um, it comes up, it says Rhino. If I The height is 0.05 millimeters. That's a clue that I'm maybe in millimeters, not inches. I say OK. It says um, select an insertion point. Click. And uh, boy, where is it? Yeah, if I zoom way in, there it is. It's awfully small text. Okay, so maybe I am in inches. That brings up one other thing I want to talk about. So when you first open Rhino and it gives you this screen, or you're in this default file, I would encourage you not to use this one. What you want to do next is go File, New. And you can click on the blank sheet of paper, or you can go File, New, like this. Either one. Save changes. No, there's nothing here I need to save. Um, then you're going to have some template files. Your teacher may well have more in here for you as you go along for some of the other assignments. I'm going to make some, I think, as we work here. Um, if I want to draw in inches, I would click on inches. If I want to draw in millimeters, I'd click on millimeters and so forth. Um, so get in the habit of doing that. Otherwise, it's kind of um, disconcerting if you've done an entire drawing and found out you drew it in millimeters when it was supposed to be inches. You can't really tell just at a glance looking at the screen necessarily. So I should have done that first probably. So I click on inches, say open. Things look the same, but now I'm on a grid that truly is inches instead of millimeters. All right, that's it for the first lesson. I just wanted to get you a little bit familiar with this. Um, thank you for listening to me. On the next one, we're going to get you started actually doing a project.